Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 16th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up a sample that he found via virus total and he did so after reading the ghost pulse report. That's malware that has been going around lately. And one of the interesting aspects of it is that it uses MSI packages. So dot MSI X files in order to spread itself. These are really zip archives. So good DDAs tools like zipdump.py are ideal to really figure out what's going on here and inside this particular file that uh, Xavier found there is a PowerShell script that in this case acts as an installer. In the end the victim will end up with the redline info stealer. The other interesting part here is that the actual info stealer executable is downloaded as a fake image. So it's called in this case ddcert.jpg. But yes, it's just a plain uh, executable that's then just being executed on the victim's system. So watch out for .msix files, probably nothing that you should ever really see in email. And even having them downloaded to a workstation from a website should probably trigger some alarms. Even if it is a legitimate installer, you probably still want to know that your users are installing software. And we have some interesting new attacks against ChatGPT. The issue here is that recently ChatGPT added a feature that they call Code Analyzer. And this feature does allow you to upload some code to ChatGPT. And ChatGPT will basically tell you what it does, but it will also execute the code. The code is executed in a dedicated virtual machine. So each user is getting a different virtual machine to prevent the uh, codes are from polluting each other. But the trick here is that you may, for example, use that code to extract data from a web page. If an attacker now has control over a web page and an innocent user is using ChatGPT to read content from the web page, it's possible for a malicious web page to actually then provide additional prompts. What they sort of showed here is a simple page they set up that basically provides the current weather and then a user writing a script using a chat GPT and running in chat GPT that will basically read the weather from that page. Well, additional code, meaning prompts being included in the page were executed as well. That then led to secrets in that dedicated virtual machine to be leaked to the owner of that web page. Interesting issue and of course sort of comes back to good old basic input validation where if you are reading data from an untrusted resource and any web page would be considered an untrusted resource here, you have to make sure that it contains the kind of data that you expect before you actually act on it. And also the other sort of standard bad pattern of mixing data and code where this web page Page basically included data, the current weather, as well as code, and it wasn't really sort of differentiating between the two very well. And then we have a few miscellaneous vulnerabilities that uh, came out, of course, with a patch a Tuesday. So let me try to cover some of uh, the more interesting ones here. First of all, the Reactor Netty HTTP server. Uh, Netty is a framework that's often used for networking in Java. And this particular web server suffers from a classic directory traversal vulnerability that would allow an attacker to read arbitrary files. And Aruba fixed more vulnerabilities in its uh, PAPI protocol. Uh, this is uh, the protocol being used to manage Aruba access points, uses UDP port 8211. Nothing that should really be routed, but uh, given that you know, access point you sometimes have untrusted users connecting to certainly something that you want to be aware of. The buffer overflow vulnerabilities, and there are a couple of them, do allow arbitrary remote code execution and have a CFSS rating of 9.8. 
And finally, I want to end it on a little bit of positive note. A nice tool was released by security company FrontEck. H A R M R or Harmer, not really sure how to pronounce it, but the goal of the tool is to sanitize those horror files. They, of course, became a problem recently, like in some of the Okta breaches, where some of these browser archives were used for debugging purposes, but they included some sensitive data. Harmer, uh, the software, is supposed to sanitize these files. Haven't had a chance uh, to try it out yet, uh, but uh, the approach looks interesting. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks and for listening. Remember, no podcasts next week because of Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.